Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and today is New Comic Book Day. There were some really good ones, but, you know, I had to go for the cringe first, and boy, this is cringe. Um, this is Wonder Twins number one, and it is by, um, Mark Russell, who, on a general rule of thumb, I am not sure what happened to my audio. It has been bouncing around as it pleases, but... As I was saying, as a general rule of thumb when it comes to Mark Russell, I don't buy it. I don't find his work funny, good, or even talentful. Is that a word? Talentful? I don't find him talented. There we go. And the art is by Steve Byrne, who I do find talented. And now let's see if I can fix this back together. I love his um, cartoony style, I guess you could say. But um, we've seen the preview of this a while back, and... Really, honestly, he put a lot into that preview, those six pages that were on preview. And you'd look and there would be stuff in the background and everything else. The rest of it, there's not. Like, he was just like, yep, I'm done with this. I know this is going on on preview. I am going to get people mad. And the rest of it, I'm not going to worry about the backgrounds. So, what a smart move on their part. Just free advertisement from people thinking this is ridiculous. But anyway... Um, it starts off and we see the high school, the Wolf Pack, and um, I went over this before in a previous video, but very quickly, like, the girl, Jaina, is doing the announcements, and they're trying to break her out of her shell, she's new, yada yada, something about embarrassing ancestors, and then we see this um, whole scene with, that we've seen before that is just absolutely great, like, it is just the, the pinnacle of cringe and I'm not even going to go back over it because I don't I still looking at it I don't understand it and seeing this kid goes many body fluids were involved just makes me want to throw up in my mouth so we're going to go right through that but they get to go to the hall of justice a job they were handed to by Superman and Batsy and Wonder Woman are kind of wondering like why and he explains you know Jaina can turn into animals and he morphs into water. Okay. And she's like, I'm super underwhelmed. I mean, I get it. I do. But he owed, Superman owed their father a um, favor, I guess. And that's good enough reason to bring people into the Justice League, apparently. So that is why they are there. Batman says, keep him out of my way. Yeah, this, this is just mess. So weird to me. So he's explaining to them, the Wonder Twins, um, exactly, you know, the protocol at the Hall of Justice. And he's telling them about, you know, why they do what they do so they don't all show up at the same spot at once. And, wow, they all showed up at the same spot at once. Super funny, Mark. Like, I could not stop laughing. Ugh. Um, and then Black Lightning gets sent to... Somewhere Aquaman should have been sent. And he's like, oh, electricity, you know, electricity and water is not good. Again, super funny. And then um, he's talking about the supercomputer. And he's like, oh, yeah, that was all. We needed all of this before cell phones. Now it's just used for music. What? Like, I'm sure there's a lot more that the supercomputer could do other than, you know, play music that a cell phone could not. But, um... Hawkman's like, you know, we just discovered a body. And the boy's like, congratulations. Oh, my God. I, I don't even know how to take this. Like, uh, it's so cringy. He's like, that's not what you say. Well, obviously, he knows that's not what you say. Well, regardless, they realize that Mr. Mixelpick has come from the fifth dimension. And Superman is not happy about it. And they are off, leaving the... Wonder Twins behind with a supercomputer. I don't know. Like, this whole thing doesn't make sense to me. So, I guess you would leave two teenagers behind with a supercomputer and full access to it. But sure, why not? Um, and that's the first thing they do. They want to watch, like, TV on it. And they see them in trouble. But just, you know, they're like, oh, they're fine. It's cool. They kind of talk to this computer. And that's it. Like... The computer offers to play some music. And um, Zan is like, you know, he's got bigger fish to fry. He's going to be the popular kid in school. He's like daydreaming with his sister about how he's going to be this super cool kid. And he's going to join the hockey team. 
and become the ice. And that is going to, I, I don't get his reasoning here because even if he was the ice, like how would that help the team? Like, would it be smoother? Would it be better ice than just any other ice? I don't, I don't get it. But then once he becomes the ice, he's going to have a cool nickname, H2O, and an awesome pet, um, alligator, I, I guess. Like, kids always dream about having alligators these days, I guess. But Superman shows back up, and yeah, they could handle it. And he says, you know, I told you they could handle it. Yeah. And they go back home, and they're just kind of having a little bit of dialogue here. And they're ready for school, and, you know, he's super serious about being the coolest kid in school. And they decide that they want to um, race and use their powers to race. So we see that whole, like, Wonder Twins activate thing. Yeah. And just for a race, though, he goes into the um, sewers, and she takes off his bird. And um, we pan back to Superman, and he's kind of talking about what they're going to do, about Mixelpix. And... Zan gets lost in the sewer, I guess. And he's down. I don't know. But we see him um, go to gym class. And he's, you know, has this whole idea of how he's going to be super cool. Well, it starts like thunderstorming. And he, if we, from the beginning, you know, all the adults in Exxon would, you know, have these thunderlust issues when it would start to storm. So he is, you know, of age. And he just doesn't know what's happening. His eyes turn purple and he doesn't know what's going on. I mean, I think he does know what's going on. But the coach asks, what's the matter? And he's like, all he can say is thunder lust. And everybody hears him. Poor kid. And um, so he gets the uh, new nickname of just thunder lust. Not his cool H2O nickname, but just thunder lust. So they go back to the Hall of Justice and... Uh, Jane is talking to Wonder Woman and they're talking about this whole situation with Zan and Batman and Superman showed up and he's like, um, you know, Batman wants to know what's going on. He's like, he became a man today. Like, I think they're insinuating this is like his first boner. I don't know. Like, how did he become a man? Did he pay taxes? Did he like buy a car? I don't know. So Batman tells this story to make him feel better. About when he was in high school, he had a crush on this Becky, and he wrote a poem or a song for her that was to the tune of How Deep Is Your Love by the Bee Gees. And um, his teacher thought it was a poem, so she read it out loud, and he got super embarrassed, and he's trying to make this kid feel better. Like, I feel like that is so out of character for Batman to include this story, let alone for him to say it to a kid to try to make him feel better, like... Superman, maybe, I don't know. Superman goes on to, you know, do the same thing. And he's talking about when he was talking to this lady in high school. And he put his arm up against the lean, like, all suave-like and falls into the lady's restroom. Super cool. I have an embarrassing story. When I was a freshman in high school, I definitely did way worse. I jumped into the pool and, yeah, got up and I had a floater. And I didn't even notice till I went to get out of the pool and my boobs hanging out and yeah it's a hot mess so those weren't very good stories to be embarrassed by guys i could way outdo you on that one but it's mark russell so i'm really not surprised but they are i mean they really are just trying to make them feel better fine whatever but then we go to the last page here and they're talking um to the computer back and forth and mr mixelpick shows up and she says to the computer, say his name backwards. And that's the end of the story. Like, it was that easy to get rid of him just for Jaina? I don't know. I See, this is the thing. I expected it to be worse. And it wasn't great. But it was so middle-lined that it was just painful. It was so just okay. Like, it wasn't near as bad as, like, man eaters or even goddess mode but it was so just okay and the story can't just be okay and it's supposed to be aimed for i'm assuming i mean originally it was supposed to be aimed for kids but it's definitely not for kids and it's definitely like ugh, just i feel like this was so middle middle down the road that 
there's nothing to even say about it because there's nothing good to say about it. There's not a whole lot bad to say about it because nothing was horrible, but nothing was great. Like some of the writing, the, you know, the satire in it was just painful. And a lot of it made no sense, but it was basically so okay that it was painful. Plain and simple. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I definitely will not be following this series. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.